Welcome, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Stuff in Our Cupboard, the Pandemic Pantry Edition. A few days ago, we made a no-need bread. And during that process, I took off about a quarter-sized or a walnut-sized piece of bread dough, put it into this bowl with a cup of water and a cup of flour. I then stuck it in the fridge, and I left it in the fridge for about a day. Took it out about 12 hours ago, left it on the counter at room temperature, and you can see it started to bubble up. The yeast has really activated. And I said in that video I'm going to show you how to use it. And I've struggled a little bit with how I'm going to use it, because initially I thought I would show you how to use it as a sourdough starter. You could treat this exactly like a sourdough starter. It is not a sourdough starter, so don't start on me about that. At this point, it is just uh, commercial yeast, flour, and water. It is a levain or a biga. But over time, if you treat it like a sourdough starter, it will start to sour. And you could use it in any sourdough recipe. You cut off the amount that the sourdough recipe asks you to use, and you just use it, and then you feed it, and you maintain it that way. There are a lot of people who will be watching this video who perhaps don't um, make a lot of bread, who are maybe not as confident in the kitchen. So I thought I would show you how to use it all and then save a piece for your next loaf so that you just continue on using the same thing for all of your loaves. So the best way to do that is to treat this as a levain or a biga. So you go back to our original no need recipe from a couple of days ago and you essentially look at that recipe and you take out one cup of flour, one cup of water, and the yeast because that's already here. So you've already started mixing this loaf of bread um, so you just think of it that way. You've taken part of that original recipe, you've already mixed it up, you've left it for a couple of days, and now you're going to mix in the rest of the ingredients. So, instead of the three and a half cups of flour I think was in the original, don't quote me on that, please check out the recipe in the description box. Uh, I'm going to put that in, because there's already a cup of flour in here. Um, next I'm going to put the levain or the biga in. You just put it all in. Um, there will be a little bit of water on top. It may have separated somewhat. That's okay. It's fine. Um, it's going to do that. So we'll put that all in. And then I've got the rest of the water. So I think the first one was a cup and three quarters of water. We've already got a cup of water in. So I've got three quarters of a cup of water. And I don't want to put all of that in at once. I want to hold some back. And we're going to talk about that as I mix this. So there, I'm going to hold that much back. I've also got some salt, I'm just going to put that in as well, and we're going to mix this with a wooden spoon. There were a lot of people in the comment section for that other video giving me stick because I didn't give weighed measurements for the ingredients to this loaf. And there's a couple reasons why I didn't do that. Uh, first reason is I know that uh, most of my viewers are in the United States, and scales in the kitchen in the United States, just not a thing. Just not a thing. So I wanted to use something that everybody has, which is a measuring cup. Um, now, I'm generally on board with weighing stuff. When I develop recipes, I weigh everything. And I make sure that it works by weight. And then I make sure it works by volume, because volume in the United States and Canada, where I live in Canada, volume reigns supreme for all baking or cooking. It doesn't matter what the ingredient is. People just use cups just the way it is. It's the way it's always been, and it probably won't change anytime soon. So that's why I used uh, volume measurements, just to make it simple, to make it approachable, so that anybody can rock up in their kitchen and make this. The other reason that I sort of uh, don't really care if I use weights for this type of recipe is that I'm going to put in just a little bit more water. It's a little bit too dry. You don't want it to come together in homogenous um, ball like you would if you were kneading bread. It still needs to be ragged. I think this is a little too ragged, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. Be very careful when you add extra water that you don't add too much, because then you get into a seesaw back and forth. A little bit more water, a little bit more flour, and then, you know, it just goes downhill from there. So just add a little bit more. Which brings me to flour. Um, the reason that even a, um, a weighted recipe for bread is just a guideline, is that flour is different everywhere you go. Even if you went into the same supermarket, if I went to the supermarket here and bought five different brands of the same type of flour, all-purpose or bread, doesn't matter which one, each one of those flours 
would be different. Each one of those flowers would have a different protein content. Each one of those flowers would be a different mix of wheat. It's all wheat, but there are different strains of wheat, and those different strains of wheat have different protein content, and they absorb water differently. So even though I would say X amount of flour and X amount of water to make your dough by weight, um, you would still need to play with it a little bit because it would be different depending on where you are. And just a little bit more water. I think we're there. I think we're there. So there we go. We have a really nice ragged ball of dough. From here on in, it's exactly the same. I'm going to cover it over, leave it at room temperature for um, 8 to 14 hours. Depending on when you make this, you could do this in the morning and have this bread for dinner, or you could make this after supper, leave it out overnight, and bake it tomorrow morning and have it for breakfast or lunch. Either way. So I'm just going to leave this on the counter, and we'll come back for the next step. Here we go. You're going to find that on this batch, when you use the bigger or the Levant or the starter or whatever it is that you want to call it, you're going to find that you get a much better rise on the dough. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But from now on, the rest of the recipe is exactly the same. So you just grab it on the outside and you fold it over. You bring it into the center and you fold it over. And you want to do this 6 to 12 times. 6, or 12, six to 12 folds, not 6 or 12 turns of the bowl. So you just pull it over, turn it, pull it over, and you just keep doing that. And so that strengthens the dough. This is also the point where you want to take out a little piece, same as you did last time, but the size of a walnut, put it in another bowl, feed it flour and water, and let it hang out for your next bread baking. So we're going to do this. Now the dough can stick to your hand. The dough will stick to your hand. It is okay when you're doing this folding. A lot of people uh, left comments saying that they dip their hand in water and that prevents sticking. That's what you want to do. That's fine. I find that it just makes my hand too slippery and then I can't kind of feel what the dough is doing. And I like that feeling of the dough. So I think I've got it folded enough. Next up is, same as last time, a little bit of flour in the bottom of a bowl. And we take this mount and into the bowl with the flour. Grab up what's ever left over. I've got a doughy hand and I've got a clean hand. So clean hand into the flour bag, dust a little bit of flour on top, and just make sure that the dough ball is covered and coated in the flour. And you can use whatever flour you want for this. I often will put on a little bit of a, of a cracked wheat flour just to give some texture. Don't have to if you don't want to. We're going to cover this over and in the oven is our Dutch oven preheating to 450 degrees in about half an hour we move on to the next step. Okay everything is super hot. I had a lot of people ask me about the Dutch oven. They don't have a Dutch oven, you don't have a Dutch oven. What the other alternatives are. Now part of the problem with this is the Dutch oven gets super hot and stays super hot. And when I put the lid on, it creates a steam chamber. And that steam chamber is what helps the bread uh, rise and get a really nice crust on the outside. So you need something that is heavy with a good thermal mass with a lid that seals reasonably well to keep the steam inside. And that could be as simple as a soup pot. That could be, uh, I don't know. A soup pot is the only other thing that I can really think of. You don't want to use anything that's glass because you're going to dump the cool-ish dough into a super hot glass dish and it could shatter and you don't want that to happen. So that's going to be in the oven for half an hour with the lid on and then about 20 minutes with the lid off. And of course bread is cooked, this type of bread is cooked, when an internal temperature is 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have an instant read thermometer, Use it. Okay. Hey friends. Yet another loaf of bread. <laughs> this one, this one with the um, with the saved yeast. Now, it's much larger than the other one. You get a better rise. And I'm I'm gonna say that the interior. Oh, this is the worst bread knife ever, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. I the did one. tell you. I, I know. I should have brought. It was the one. I should have brought the one from inside. Um, looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. So it's, it's going to have a little bit better flavor and texture than the first one we made because that Levant Which was adds, a good bread. Yeah. 
Yeah, so imagine a good bread now. A little bit better. A little bit better. Your family, after having the first one, is going to be amazed at how quickly your bread skills have advanced by the time you get to the second one. Flavor and texture. I gotta say the one piece. Mm-hmm. Nice and crispy, mm -hmm. chewy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So 190 degrees Fahrenheit is when this type of loaf bread is finished. I pulled this one out at 207. So a, there is a variation. There's a wide so, so range yeah, there. Yeah. So you've you've got a bit of space. If it's if it goes past 190, you need don't, to panic. don't worry. It's fine. You could probably take this all the way up to 225, and it would still be a good a good loaf of bread. Of bread. So um, keep playing with this. Give it a try, and you can use that Levin, that bigga, uh, for any loaf of bread. Just like I said, you just subtract the flour and water that you've already got in the bigger, and everything's fine. Thanks for stopping by. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you again soon.